Let's call the meeting to order of the Rochester Planning Commission. Our first and only order of business this evening is a uh, public hearing. Um, and I will read the hearing notice on the draft Rochester Zoning Bylaw. Uh, Rochester Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on the draft Rochester Zoning Bylaw on Tuesday, October 24th, 6 p.m. at the Rochester Town Offices. Community members may attend remotely using the following access information on, a, on Zoom. Um, I guess I'll go through the whole thing here, Cindy. That's part of the warning. The proposed draft bylaw covers all the lands in the town of Rochester. The purpose of this hearing is to take comment from the public on the draft bylaw so that the Planning Commission can consider these as it makes its final revision prior to sending this to the Select Board. Select Board will hold its own hearing later. The proposed bylaw will replace the current zoning regulations in their entirety. The bylaw is meant to further the purposes of the town plan and Act 24, Section 4302. Copies of the draft can be found at the town clerk's office during business hours or on the town website at the link provided in the hearing notice. Great. Let us begin. I'm going to provide some introductory remarks and uh, go over briefly where we made some changes in the document. Some of them are um, uh, organizational, some of them are pretty substantive. Um, and just to kind of pique your interest and, and open it up for questions um, from, from anyone in Zoom land or, or here visiting us. Um, what I wanted to start with was the just reading what the intent of our zoning is. Uh, and this is in the, in the bylaw. The intent of this bylaw is to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the inhabitants, to protect the value of existing property, and ensure orderly growth in the town of Rochester. By preventing the overcrowding of land by new development, promoting adequate sewage disposal, water supplies, transportation, schools, and other necessary town services. It is not the intent of this bylaw to supplant or replace any state or federal regulations. Any proposed development must also satisfy applicable state of Vermont regulations, um, Act 250, Access Management, etc. So, um, so we're here to take comments from from the public. So any any questions you have, um, maybe just as we're going, feel free. Since we're a small group, feel free to raise your hand and at the moment something pops into your mind and we'll get to your question. Um, we started working on this revision back when we started revising the town plan, which was adopted by the select board, revised and adopted uh, by the select board in 2020. And uh, at that time we had a list of 12 or 13 things that we had seen in the town plan that we wanted to make sure um, synced with our zoning. And so we looked at that list and we started working on it ourselves. Um, at the time COVID hit and we learned how to do Zoom for a little while and that uh, wasn't the most effective, but um, we really started working on it in earnest when we um, got into a contract with Two Rivers, Two Rivers Adequichi Regional Planning Commission. Um, and that's when we got the help of Sarah Wright who's with us um, tonight. Um, you know, our intent was originally just to hit those 12 or 13 points but then uh, working with Sarah, we really saw that um, our almost 14-year-old um, zoning bylaw was pretty, was pretty out of date in a number of ways. Um, and I'll talk about why we, why we thought that. Um, so um, we really want to thank um, Sarah for her work on this. Really outstanding. <laughs> outstanding, really good at what she does. Extremely thorough. Um, and really coached us along the way as opposed to dictating anything that we needed to do. She let us know when we were not in line with, with the law, uh, which was we were grateful for. Uh, but we couldn't have gotten through this um, as effectively um, and as um, efficiently without Sarah. So thank you, Sarah. Um, and I also want to thank you know, this volunteer board for the work they did on this month after month after month um, over the past few years to get us to this point where we have something to share with the community and then um, something to send over to the select board for their review and hopefully adoption. 
Um, so we needed to revise our zoning because, as I said, it was 14 years old, and some things have happened in that, that 14 years. State statutes have been changed and, and clarified. Um, there's been a housing shortage nationwide and in Vermont and in Rochester. Um, um, we've seen a couple of floods in that time that we um, first had our town zoning, so that also weighs in. Um, we found um, lots of people wanting to move to Vermont and move to Rochester, uh, making housing even more difficult, um, for especially for young folks trying to get a start. Um, and we saw opportunities, and there's another gr whole group um, that Sandy is part of that's looking at housing and how zoning affects housing in a, a five-town area. That <coughs> well, yes. Yeah. Uh, so um, it was an opportunity to look at our, our zoning and see how it impacts um, opportunities for housing and increasing housing um, in our in our town. Um, so what's changed? Uh, some 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 organizational um, things. The way it's going to laid out, um, it just flows a little bit better now than than it used to. Um, it's easier to find things. Um, uh, we've beefed up some sections and um, reduced some sections. One section we actually um, got rid of, our telecommunication and um, towers section, because everything in, in that is already covered by state statute, and our town plan has uh, direction on telecommunications, which gives us an in in participating in those um, state um, permit processes. So we, um, we eliminated that uh, section of the zoning. Um, we looked hard at our the districts. We still have the six same six districts that we had before. Business residential, uh, the village, and then commercial residential, which is the valley floor north to Hancock and south to um, LC LCS? Yes. LCS. <laughs> um, I always get that confused with the LCI, Lake Champlain International <laughs> Fishing Derby. But, um, um, then the ag, ag residential is the valley floor going at Route 73, and then all, every elevation above the valley floor is our conservation residential district. And then we've got our aquifer recharge, recharge, recharge um, district around the town well south of town, as well as our flood hazard overlay, which allows us to participate in the um, National Flood Insurance Program. Um, we made our districts a little more clear. Uh, we used to have a list of what's permitted, a loose list of what could be done conditionally in, um, in, in each district, um, and we changed that um, because you couldn't possibly think of all the things that were potentially conditional use in a district. Um, so we have our list of um, permitted activities, permitted uses, then we have a list of prohibited uses, things that we didn't want to happen in certain um, districts, and then everything else um, that comes to people's mind, they can come to us for a conditional use permit. Um, and we just uh, thought that was a better way of being open to different uses of the land. We couldn't possibly create a conditional use list of every imaginable, um, likely, and, and possibly beneficial use uh, for the community. Um, housing being a big part of it, we increased housing density to allow and encourage for more multifamily units um, in some districts. Um, we changed the minimum lot size in the village or business residential district. Um, it was one half acre. It's down to one fifth of an acre in the village. Um, and then we've got a density gradient, if you will, from the village on out to the on the valley floor, um, an increase in the density of units that can be put on, on a lot. Um, the lot sizes are the same. Um, one acre in the commercial residential, which is the valley floor north to Hancock and then down to um, LCS, um, and then two acres out um, Route 73, and then three acres up in the, in the higher elevations. Those are the same unchanged. Also from LCS to Stockbridge. Oh, and LCS to Stockbridge is part of the um, uh, Ag, -res. Ag Res, along with uh, Route 73 corridor. Um, Some other things we did in in um, in general standards. So there are general standards, there are conditional use standards, and then there are special standards for particular 
conditional use um, activities. Um, and the general standards, um, we added a few things. Um, we said that you cannot create a lot that is accessed only by a town trail. Many of our town trails are former town roads, and people might think of them as a road, but they are not, by state statute, they are not roads um, by definition. Um, and we require road frontage for a lot to be created. Um, so uh, it's really more a clarification of how town roads are treated in terms of creating lots. Um, we added some um, standards about glare and lights and reflection. It was something that was brought up to us and um, there's no harm in putting it in. Um, we also added that you could have more than one principal building if you have a home industry on your lot. Um, typically, you can only have one primary um, building, uh, principal building, and a, another building uh, had to be smaller than that building. Uh, but with, if we want to encourage home industry where someone could put a workshop, we wanted it to be able to be larger um, and be as big as a principal building. It could be a barn or a workshop or, or what have you. Um, and home industry would be something that someone could do under um, conditional use. So they would come to us and say, we've got this building, we're going to uh, do our home industry with it. And there may be conditions on something like that. Um, we added some language about abandonment and discontinuance. Uh, for building structures, homes that um, have been abandoned and not up kept, up kept, kept up, um, and may be um, a health hazard or a public nuisance. It gives us um, an ability to, to approach those folks and say, look, we clean this place up, or if you need a little more time to fix it up, let us know, we can work with you. But it's something that gives us some teeth if there is an extended or, um, discontinuous or uh, abandoned um, building. Um, we also added a, um, a stream side buffer in the areas outside of our um, valley floodplains. Um, we noticed, we know that um, erosion doesn't just happen in the flooded areas in the valley bottom, that it happens um, on properties up in the hills, up in the mountains along stream side. Um, so we've added a, um, I'm gonna say 25 foot, buffer where you can't build closer than 25 feet uh, from a stream um, to prevent um, uh, loss from erosion, stream bank erosion. Um, we did a few things in the conditional use standards. Um, we listed all of the, we had a set of um, conditional use standards that we would measure each proposal by, and they were a Rochester um, sort of um, list of standards, but we also added all the standards that were required under state statute. Um, so we've now got a list of 14 standards. So when someone comes in for a conditional use permit, they, they know what they're getting into. They can review those and say, yeah, and they can address each of those in a conditional use hearing. Um, also in that um, conditional use standards, we expanded on um, clarified visual impacts and landscaping. Um, we've always had the, the sort of the question of what is, um, uh, when we say, uh, what, what's the terminology we use? Screening, visual screening, or you know, a buffer or a visual screen for um, some activity. And we didn't really explain what that needed to look like. Was that trees? Was it shrubs? Was it just grass in some cases? So we expanded and expounded on that, um, that piece. And then, as I mentioned, we set a um, we have a special a list of special standards, and these are standards for particular um, land uses, um, for home occupation and home industry, which we also defined um, um, clearly in our uh, in our glossary. Um, we clarified in the special standards um, the differences between temporary shelters, alternative. Uh, uh, accessory dwelling units and cabins, um, three distinct things, and, and, and clarified that. We added standards for mobile homes, including setbacks and minimum um, lot size and, and green space. Um, we limited primary retail, this, um, defined primary retail and secondary retail. And we limited primary retail, which is only allowed in the, in the village, um, to 4,000 square feet of um, available space for customers to shop in. 
Um, and we added campgrounds in our special standards. We've had more and more requests for folks wanting to put sort of shelters or campgrounds onto their land and invite um, people um, to, for short-term stays. And then we made quite a few uh, changes in our definitions, clarifying some things and, and adding some definitions. Um, and that's a, a recap of a few years of work. <laughs> so um, hope that maybe uh, shed some light on what we've been doing and maybe uh, any clarifications or questions you have about any parts of that. Um, love to entertain it. Yes, Martha. Um, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't write as fast as people can talk sometimes. And some of what you, and some of, I got a lot of what you said, but I didn't get a, everything, um, particularly in the beginning. Do you have any of that in an emailable form or not? Not in an emailable form, but um, okay. we can we can talk later and I can okay. give you my notes or I can put a few things down for you. Yeah, thank you. I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Um, I, I think I've got most of every, most everything, but... Um, I want to make sure that, you know, the information I put in the paper and the, my, the article is correct, as, you know, et cetera, sure. as always. Yeah, being recorded. <laughs> yeah, and Martha, it's recorded, remember, so you can go in and um, listen to uh, my tirade there. So who could I get that from? Well, uh, Julie, Julie or Kristen, let, call them first so that they, so that they, they make sure that it's, um, that it's been downloaded, but yes. Okay, the only thing is, um, I had an issue with the, the, I can't do stairs, and I had an issue with the lift. So, so I'm... Um, the other possibility is Orca. Um, Mr. Orca, when, when, is your, when does your thing get posted? Um, probably about a week. Okay. At the latest. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. Well, I'll, if I have any questions, I'll check in with you, um, Dan, if you're, if you're going to be a, around for the next few days, probably. Yeah. And, and, and the new language is on our website. Is on the town website, okay. so um, you you can read it, or anybody you know. Okay, you check the town people. website. That's a good idea. Thank you, Sandy. And you can encourage people to read it. Thank you, Sandy. Um, I appreciate you. Okay, I'll, I'll mute myself again. Thank you. And Martha, you don't have to come into the office to get that recording. Um, it should get be posted somewhere on the town website for you to just pull it off. Oh, okay. I, I'm hoping. All right. <laughs> or they I will can check that. Or they can mail it to you. Mail you a. Document. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Yes, Nancy. So you talked about visual screening and landscaping yeah. and a new standard. Is that something where so-called junkyards would come into play? Definitely, yeah. Well, it, it, it's a standard for, for conditional use. Right. So, so, so she's asking if somebody has, if somebody has a messy, it's, it's not something that we just sort of call up if somebody has a messy house, which is no. what I think she's asking. No. Um, if someone came to us and said, we want to start a salvage yard or have a, uh, then we would have a conditional use hearing and there, we may put conditions on that, that, that use. And that's where it would come into play. Um, someone that current, has something currently in use, um, the, the new regulations don't apply to something that's already in use, unfortunately. Okay. Plus, 25 foot buffer on streams, considering yeah. the floods, how do you define a stream? Because those innocent streams became rivers. Yeah, um, and I think we use the USGS map, wherever there's a blue line on the US Geological Survey map, would be a, a stream. Um, let me. Double check that while I have. If anybody know that, right? I'm going to check if it's 25 or, or 35. Um, we talked about it. Yeah. And that was something we went around and around about because there are a lot of little streams, um, and that's a lot of land. That We've got it here on the screen. Oh, got it. Yeah. So USGS survey map streams will have a minimum building setback of 50 feet horizontally from top of the bank. No ground disturbance within 35 feet measured horizontally from the top of the bank. Okay. Do you define the width of a stream? 
kids. Mm -hmm. No, oh, so the, it is measured from the top of the bank of the stream. That's when you start counting the distance. That's how old, how old, <laughs> how wide is the original stream before you start measuring back from the center of it? It's not the center, it's the, the edge of the bank. The edge of the bank, it's the edge right. of the bank. Yeah. So wherever that is at that time, that's where you start measuring from. Because yes, that can change over time, but wherever it is at that point in time, that's where you start measuring from. I'm thinking of all those little babbling brooks that suddenly became roaring rivers. Somebody would look at that and say that's not worth a 25-foot buffer. Well, it says also that if on existing lots of one acre or less, the building setback and no ground disturbance zone are reduced to 25 feet from the top of the bank. So if you have lots of room, it's 35 feet. If it's an acre or less, it's 25 feet. It, the, the, the impetus for this um, is like other floodplain um, management is that when we have floods and there's damage, uh, you know, the, the community pays for part of the, the restoration of, uh, what, I forget what the town portion of road repairs and things is after, after a flood. Do you have any? It, it probably depends. depends how... Um, Current, we are with certain stamps, it's like 10 or 15 percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for, I mean, for private homes, I think a lot of folks, um, I, I don't know, private homes, there's not that same cost share from the town. Martha? Excuse me, I forgot to ask before. Um, Sarah Wright, what is her what is her position? Is she from a, um, the state or two rivers? Two rivers. Excuse me. Two rivers. Two rivers. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> so in this, are you dealing at all with short term housing? Uh, we have one. Um, we deal with it in one way in the areas outside of the village in the valley bottom in conservation residential it is a um, conditional use so someone wants to do a short-term rental on their property they come in and they propose it to us and we you know look at all the conditions that we have for conditional use um, uh, noise dust parking um, vibrations oh they they may not apply but they're all all there and we adopted the state definition of short-term rental, which is, which is more than 14 nights uh, in a calendar year. So if you if you you can you could do short-term rental for 10 nights, and and it doesn't get triggered under state law. So we we just we just piggyback state law on the definition. With respect to any kind of regulation, we have been advised that the sensible way to do that is what by a, a select board ordinance and not in the zoning that has taken us whatever it is five years to fix mm -hmm. an ordinance can be can be um, tweaked mm -hmm. on a much more uh, timely basis uh, and I think one of the things that we will be talking about when we finally after we take a bre take a breath is is thinking about whether we want to make some recommendations to the select board I will tell you from the the conferences that I've been to um, the minute that you step into regulation, it starts to get really murky really fast. Um, the hardest thing is the um, uh, is the registration. So, so the first thing you want to know is who's doing it. So you make people register. Well, who's going to man who's going to who's going to manage that? Well, what towns do is they hire a company to do that. Thirty-five thousand dollars. Thank you very much to to manage your your database. So you know how much money do we want to put into this, and what do we want it to look like? So. We wanted, you know, where are, so we decided that we would punt the the um, the regulation question to another day because it really does start to, you know, is it, you know, do you have to live there? You know, how how does a ski house work? Um, you know, it, one of the reasons that we did what we did in this with the the uses is that we were trying to make it a little less um, appealing to buy a property in North Hollow for the purpose 
of renting it out as, as Airbnb. That was that you know if you already have, we have a lot of we have a lot of properties already in town that that do short term rentals, but um, we wanted to not put a red flag on put up a, a a welcome flag that said yes buy every house in town you know company from Colorado and and rent them out. So we'll be encouraging the select board to take up that topic. To take it over. Yeah. I hope with a lot of community input. It's a, it's a hot topic. Yeah, because that begins to spell the definition of community. Yeah. Yeah. But but the, tra the but as as someone pointed out the other night at the at the housing meeting, then there's all of the business that those people bring into town, and what does that do for our for our economy overall? So there's there's you know there there are trade offs on both sides. The rest, the restaurants, the grocery store, the. Does this get involved with fees, or is that a select board decision? Fees, fees? for different permits. Oh, uh, for permits. permit, um, we did not. No. So it's a, it's yeah, I mean, there there are no fees associated with um, zoning mm -hmm. permits, just for building permits, mm -hmm. um, and we so we haven't touched mm -hmm. that. I think you do have language in here about violation fees for violations, but it doesn't get oh. specific. It's yeah. like the amounts are to be set by the town, but not the violations. In this, yeah. in this ordinance, yeah. Is um, there is there a period of time if you've taken out a building permit? Is there a period of time in which you have to um, have it completed? It's three years, I think. Yes, that's part of the discontinuous uh, dis discontinued this Does it issue. Have to be completed in three years. Yeah. Okay. It's like the the front doorstep. Yeah. <laughs> um. find that real quick. Sarah's working on it too. Three years. Three years. So I can try to read it for folks in the back. A permitted structure that is A, is not substantially complete more than three years after the issuance of its zoning permit. B is unoccupied and is either deemed uninhabitable by the health officer or deemed a fire hazard by the fire chief or state fire marshal. C, due to disrepair, lacks any major structural element customary to the type of the building involves, like a roof or windows or water supply. Or lastly, D, is a conforming structure that lacks any major structural element due to damage and no repair work has been undertaken within one year of the damage shall be considered abandoned for the purposes of this bylaw. And then abandoned structures shall require new zoning permits and approvals as applicable under this bylaw. Does that clarify? Yeah. One of the things we struggled with um, over the several months was the idea of um, providing housing opportunity by putting two homes on one lot. Um, yeah, you know, a number of people had come to us and said, we'd like to build a cabin or a small house for Aunt Betty or for my, my, my kids or uh, and the way we interpreted our, our, our current zoning was that we couldn't allow them to do that unless it was attached to the house, um, attached to the existing um, structure. Uh, but new clarification um, from the state allows, allows that um, accessory dwelling unit to be detached and separate from the home. So it does, we're excited that we do now have an opportunity for folks to add another home smaller and the existing home onto their existing lot, if the lot's big enough, um, uh, to allow for, for more housing. 
And usually it was folks that wanted to do something for family members, the, the requests that we got. So you said if the lot is big enough. Well, an accessory, an accessory dwelling right. unit within, within your home is protected under state law. So any, any property can have an accessory dwelling unit. Um, but what, what he was talking about was, was that we had, we had people who really wanted to set up, have a cottage, let's say a cottage. And, and so we, we, looked, we, we spent a lot of time looking at how that would, what that would look like. But that is also, an ex it, it, if, it meets, if it meets the requirement, which I think we said is uh, 50, uh, not more than 50% of the, foot, the um, square footage of the dwelling, of the principal dwelling, um, uh, or 1,200 square feet, whichever is larger, um, and then, then you get to do it. And that's that's a building that falls under the accessory dwelling unit, but you've also allowed for more than one principal building per lot um, in the cases of um, the home industry. Right. 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 So, so the accessory dwelling unit has very specific definitions that the town has laid out, which also fall under state statutes. You'd have to make sure that you're meeting if you're going to build on the same lot. But the the, the state the state guarantees you up to thirty percent of the of the square footage, and we increased it to 50%. So, so, so ours is a little more generous than the state, mm -hmm. and the um, and the reduction in lot size in the village mm -hmm. um, is also also reflects recently pa recently enacted state law. We also thought we thought it was a good idea, but um, that this, this is this is where the services are. So this is where we want right. concentration to be. Um, could I ask a question? Yes. Um, unless I'm confused, the original ex accessory dwelling unit, would you count that as like an apartment that's in, say, the upstairs of your of one home, that someone lives downstairs and they have an apartment upstairs or whatever, or in the back of the house or whatever? Yeah. But what you're going, what your new re regulation for, if I understand correctly, is for a separate building on the same lot. Like you said, that you know, a, a lot of people looking for possibly someone for their for their family or whatever. Yeah, it's but both. Okay, now because yeah. the, the state is allowing that, so the town is also. Yes. But there, but both of the things that you described are accessory dwelling units. Yep. The upstairs apartment, the garage apartment, the the cottage, all of those are accessory dwelling yeah. units. But originally, there wasn't. You weren't allowed to have a separate building on on, on the same lot, right? Correct. Okay. But now you are. Okay. All right. Thank you. Under 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 our proposal. Yes, under our draft. <laughs> which is not which is not which is not in, in place at the moment. Okay. Am I am I correct that is the town voting on this at all or what? No. Um, well, the, the select board. Yeah, the select board. Not a town vote, but um, the select board. Oh, okay. So the select board will vote up. The select board will have a hearing in November. Um, and then they'll they'll vote to adopt it. They'll have they'll have their own. We're, this is our warrant hearing. When we're when when we made whatever changes we we are inclined to make after comments tonight, we will get it to the select board, and they will warn their own hearing. At which point they they can adopt it. We hope they will adopt it. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Do you have a question? Well, are there regulations about accessory or accessory apartments in a in a multi-story building and access and egress? Are there are there requirements within the zoning for that? Like a um, fire escape, for instance. You decide to put a that's an not apartment in your three-story house. That's Does not, that fall into it's it? It's not in our zoning that we don't require any anything like that in our zoning. If you're going to put in a um, an apartment or accessory dwelling unit, um, but I imagine if it's rented, that there are regulations. Does anyone know? Yes. So if you're, so you're renting a public building, if you are renting, that's considered a public building, so you have to go through the state fire safety permitting process. But if it's a private building, 
it's still, if you are renting it, it's still out, considered, it considered a, public, a building. public building for the purposes of state fire safety permitting okay. processes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which doesn't get run through the town, that's a separate state process. So theoretically, uh, an Airbnb situation would trigger the fire and safety. Exactly, yeah, which a lot of folks don't realize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Julie or Sandy, you want to add anything else to our, about our discussion and our learning over the past Thousands years? Of years. <laughs> Or do, do uh, there, is there anything that the, the board feels that they wish they could have addressed and didn't get to include in, in this? There are no changes to the flood rules, floodplain rules, because we understand that FEMA is about to change the ground rules yet again. Um, I don't they're pretty, what we have right now is pretty, uh, uh, pretty restrictive. So I don't, I'm, I'm not sad about that, but, mm. but it, that is, that is a part of the, of the document that was not changed. Mm. Because we have to change it when FEMA does, correct? Right. Mm. Um, one of the challenges we face, like many towns is the uh, development of our forests and farmlands, trying to maintain a, a working landscape. Um, it's, we found it difficult to work with that. Um, you know, things like um, town trails, you know, they go into the, up into the hills and if we allow the town trail to be accessed for a subdivision, um, then it could have opened up it could open up a lot uh, of land for um, forest land mm -hmm. um, for for development for you know um, three acre lots um, so it's um, it's a challenge to find out find a way to do that and many many places of you know, well developed land trusts that can conserve important blocks of forest land for uh, forest or agriculture uh, we don't have that resource, so we're we're challenged by that, and I slowly see you know that ag and forest land um, getting whittled away, if you will. Um, you know, we try and keep the the, the development um, out of there by having you know, larger lot sizes, and, um, but yeah, it's private land; they can folks can do what they want. Um, but we'll, if we continue to see the pressures of uh, folks moving to Vermont, it's going to continue to be an issue. Um, we're not really able to address it. But you did deal with something with trails. We did. We did. Um, our, our, as more of a clarification, um, our bylaw says you must have um, road frontage, X, X amount of road frontage to create a lot. Or 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 an ease or an easement to a town road or to a town road, right? And and a town trail is not legally a town road, so um, we clarified that um, by saying you can't make a lot with only only access by a town trail. Anything we didn't get to, Julie? That you. I think your synopsis was excellent, by the way. All the, <laughs> very you. well done. Um, the Town Trail one uh, was the Jerusalem fellow that started that whole conversation, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one that yeah. bought all the, the huge tract of land there and had no way of getting onto it. Is he the one logging right now up there? Oh. Yeah, he's putting in a road. I think so. Putting in a road. Okay, that's why I was wondering if he was putting in a road. Okay. Right straight down. From Jerusalem, right? Or from, from, from Bethel Mountain. Oh, from Bethel Mountain. So did he buy a, a, a right of way from somebody? Yeah, or actually um, a small piece of land, yeah, not just a right of way. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Good work. Um. So Lois, when you were talking about that creek, the uh, streams, did you want it larger? I mean, this is a time to change that if you were really concerned about that. Well, I understand the distance from the bank. Right, the top of the bank. Yeah, the top of the bank. I understand that part. Right. But I want to go, what actually defines a stream? How wide does this ribbon of water have to be before it's classified as a stream? Oh. As opposed to a spring runoff that may become permanent. But it's basically just a spring runoff that never dries up and that never dries right. up. Yeah, and I and I think that um, is is difficult to define. Mm -hmm. um, but w what the tool we have to go by is the um, the maps that the U.S. Geological Survey puts out, and if it has if it's a blue line, then they consider it a map. Oh, uh, I mean map. a stream. So, How old yeah. is the map? Um, really updated, I think. Well, yeah. it, just, it just says U.S. Geological Survey mapped streams. Yeah. So, Don't know. So I would say current, but or most the most current you can get your hands on. Um, I, you know, if you came to us with a 1900 map, we might question it, but. What, what, what would you like to see? I guess that's the question right, that's that Julie I'm, was yeah. asking. I guess I'm dig, digging deeper uh -huh. mm. to, to really determine. All of a sudden, somebody has a stream of water going across their property, and then somebody comes along and says, OK, you've got to have a 25-foot buffer on that stream. Mm. And then someone says, that stream wasn't there four years ago. Mm. Well, well, number one, keep in mind that everything that we're talking about here applies to the circumstances at the time that somebody applies for a permit. So, you know, you build your house and, and, and the river is 50 feet away and the river moves towards your house. Nobody's going to come to you and say you have to tear your house down if that's the concern, okay? It's, it's, it, but, but, it, but, it, but, if you, but if you wanted to expand your house, uh, it, you know, put an extension on, that, it might, that might trigger because at that point you're asking for a new permit and then where's the river would, would be relevant. Mm -hmm. And if um, someone wants to um, build a house and, and the zoning administrator would look at a map and see where the house is and where if there's a blue line on the USGS map. And if there's no blue line on the USGS map, then, then they're good. I can see it get a little bit tricky. Uh, the USGS maps have a solid blue line. And then when the streams become intermittent, they only flow, then it gets dotted line. And I don't know. I think we're probably talking about just solid blue lines and not no, not no. intermittent temporary streams. Yeah, I would say. It doesn't say that, does it? Well, it just says map streams. Yeah. I would argue that, it, that, it, that an intermittent line is not a map stream. If that. You could argue that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to a hydrologist. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stream in April. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so, so there's, there's, there's two issues here. One is when do you say no to a permit? And the other is, when do you say, hey guys, this isn't a very good idea, you might want to rethink it. And, and, and oftentimes, when, when Dune is working with people, it's, it's, the second, it's the second part of the conversation that you're having. You know, it's, this isn't going to work very well. Um, so, because it gets wet in April. In your basement. Yeah. So that third line says no home gardens, no ground disturbance. So, so if somebody wants to uh, put in a water garden next to the stream, they can't do it. Would it be helpful if I read out the whole text? Would that be useful for people? I'm, I'm trying to. So, USGS map streams will have a minimum building setback measured 50 feet horizontally from top of bank and no ground disturbance within 35 feet measured horizontally from top of bank. For home gardens, the no ground disturbance zone is reduced to 25 feet measured horizontally from top of bank. 
recreational motorized vehicles must not be parked within 30 feet from top of bank, regardless of lot size. On existing lots of one acre or less, the building setback and no ground disturbance zone are reduced to 25 feet from top of bank. So I won't plant water with these closed stream. <laughs> <laughs> Were we following state regulations on no. turn into knotweed? No, no. <laughs> no, we did look at some other towns. Right. Uh, and the, I mean, the the gist of this is that we want there to be a ideally a forested buffer along the stream banks, because that's what keeps the stream bank from eroding. So uh, say a little bit about um, campgrounds. Um, was, uh, we had um, quite a bit of discussion around that. We've had requests for things like campgrounds with uh, teepees and yurts and tents and things like that. And, um, we looked at what the state regulations are and the state says anything with four or more camping sites is considered a campground and requires um, uh, water and septic. Um, permits. So uh, we said, you know, smaller than that, um, well, that size and, and even smaller than that um, is a conditional use in, in the town. So it would allow someone to have a couple of campsites on their, on their property, um, two, three campsites, even four campsites. But when it gets larger, we're requesting more space and more setbacks. But they still have to go for a state permit uh, for water or or sewer for um, a larger camp campground. And is that a state law? That it is campgrounds, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Dylan, do you have any questions for your upcoming meeting with this? No. No, no. Sarah's waiting for a question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to touch on the uh, second home on a lot that is the same size or larger, we settled on needing a subdivision. Correct? Yeah, in effect, yes. if someone wanted to put okay. another. Versus a smaller yeah. accessory dwelling. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we debated that for quite a while. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and decided that. Uh, that the accessory dwelling rules were were good enough to take care of most of the most of the inquiries that we had, um, and that that anything more ambitious than that probably should be should, they should just subdivide the property. It was quite a, it was quite a debate. It was. It was. Yes. We went back and forth on that for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the state going to require a, a separate septic so, so on those accessory dwellings? Um, you have to have you, you have to cover all your bedrooms. Yeah. However, you do it. So if you if you have a house that has four bedrooms and you carve out you know one of the bedrooms and put and have a kitchen with it and that's you already you already it, assuming you already have a system that was built for four that's for, okay. four, for four bedrooms you're covered. If you are, if you are going to keep your four-bedroom house and add two more bedrooms in a cottage, then yes, you have to you have to accommodate the two more bedrooms. Now that's and and so that's one of the reasons we've been asking so many questions about the town septic, mm -hmm. because because there are certain parts of the village where where we could easily expand. There are other parts where you can't, but some of us have a lot of grandfather bedrooms, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
we have to figure out what we have to figure out what's grandfathered. That's the old one. Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking at the names. I know. I I, I thought, what is that? <laughs> Thousands of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> No more questions from anyone? Doesn't appear to be, does it? Yeah. Should we close the hearing? I think. I would suggest that. But we'll, we'll, anything we'll, anything we'll, else, Martha? Any, any questions? Um, no, right this minute, if, if at some point before I put this together for next week's paper, I could talk with you for a few minutes, that would be helpful, just right. to make sure I've clarified things correctly. Sure. Okay. But thank you very much for all your hard work, everybody. I appreciate it. Is this the entire committee, the three of you, and with advice by Sarah Wright? No. Um, we're missing Greg Wright, um, the rest of us, Dave Curtis, um, and Christine. Christine Mayer. Um, Christine Mayer. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. We are, we are short a member right now, so we're, we're recruiting. If you want to help us recruit, we'd be grateful. Um, the, the, first, the first criterion is that the person be under 50. Ooh. Well, we might want to modify. Well, that, I do qualify for that. We're going to modify that. Yeah. And, and Dune was part of our group, too, as, a, as our select yeah, board yeah, person yeah, Dune is, Dune forming is, this. Dune is ex-official. Okay. No, we're going to modify that age requirement, yes. Younger, <laughs> well, <laughs> under 40, better, better still. <laughs> We're trying to get some young people involved with the town, but. You need to. Sure. Because they're the ones that don't want to step, step up. That's why we're. Well, we need, we, need, we need their energy and we need their perspective. <laughs> Hey, I might have been 40 when I started this. Well, me too. <laughs> I was younger even. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> All right, if there are any more, no more questions, we'll... Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for Yes, thank you for your joining interest. Us today. Right. Yeah. Um, with that, we'll um, close our hearing. And... Thank you, everybody, for your hard work. Thank you, Martha. Thanks, Martha. Thanks. Thank you all for coming. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Nancy. Here. Thanks, Lois. <laughs> you're here. No, you were here, so it was. Might as well pile all over to the okay. board. <clears throat> I think since I was at a select board meeting last night and I've got another meeting tomorrow night, I am going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yes. you. All right. Can I have a good night, Martha? Yes. Will um, we be able to be at the select board's hearing to answer Absolutely. questions? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I guess she'll be there. <laughs> um, I was hoping there'd be more than me about. That's the 27th? Well, we, that's what we're hoping. We, we, we decided when you should do it. <laughs> we, that, would be a, that would be a good timeline to. After Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah that, that, that'll be difficult so for me. So, what we. Um, Dune, it has to be in the paper 15 days ahead, which is, mm -hmm. which is the really tricky piece. So, we figured if we got it to you right now, this week, that you could talk about it Monday night and make a decision, and and, and then figure out, you know, schedule it. Monday night, the thirteenth. No, mon this Monday. This that the you can talk about it this coming Monday. They don't have a meeting. We just had a meeting last. Oh, night. you're done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So the thirteenth doesn't oh. mean that we can't set um, 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 the hearing. Though. We okay. Have to set that at a public meeting. Uh, I don't. I have no. I don't think so. I don't think so. So, um, well, it just, it needs to get in the paper, it needs to get in the paper in time for it to be at least 15 days before you your hearing. So we thought that would be the second So meeting. it's 13, 27 of November, and then you go into December. Yeah, we, we'd like, we'd like. Um, the 11th of December. We'd really like you to do it in November. Um, so here, here's the problem. Um, two rivers under whatever agreement they have with the state has to wrap this up this calendar year 
Um, and so, so that's have a special meeting. that's why. Well, that but I, if you could do it at your at that no, that, that November twenty whatever it is twenty twenty seven. Why does it have to be that you, Friday? You're going to get the fifteen days because because it has well, to get in the paper. No, I know, but why couldn't they put it in like still right still off? You could have well, a, you could have a meeting there to warn a special meeting. To have it um, earlier. You don't even need have a, need to have a meeting to warn a special meeting. Right. That's what I mean. Why couldn't they? But. Yeah. We can. I, I'm not sure. We have to have a meeting to set and that. No. Um, this is basically. It will be warning. We just set a warning, just like we warn a meeting. Okay. Uh, why we ha why yeah. do we have to meeting to okay. warn a meeting? Okay. No, but my thought. Why does it have to be way up to the 27th? Well, because so if, they don't, if they don't need a meeting, 15 so days. Because, you know, because it's it has actually to longer. Just so oh, make yeah. sure it's very clear that there. Yes, there's a 15-day warning period, but there has there's a mandatory 30-day wait, wait waiting period between when the planning commission submits to the select board oh. and then you get to have your first hearing. So, so they could do, if we gave it to them tomorrow, they could schedule their hearing 30 days from then. Correct. Right. But do you have to present it to us at a formal meeting, or can you just... You, do, you don't have to have any sort of formal presentation. No. That could be a phone call from Sandy to you. Mm -hmm. So my preference, so so we had, um, we made it, we made a few recommended changes that, that I got to you last month. Yep. Um, I would like to see those incorporated. They were mostly, mostly nits and I would okay. need the whole planning commission to concur on those. We did. We did. Okay. Yeah. That's already yeah. Yep. yeah. We are. We are. Record. We already agreed on all of those. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and um, so um, with those changes, I think, I mean, there were there were there were only a couple that were marginally substantive. They were mostly nits. Yeah. I'm um, here, if anybody needs to reference them. Um, so, so um, if when you could, your... if you could, if you could incorporate those. Uh, and I guess send it, send that to, send that to Dan, and then, and then Dan can forward it to June. Thirteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's too soon to do yeah, the thirteen. And I probably won't be here for that one. Okay. So it has to be the twenty seventh. Um, okay. That's what it is because they, they. Well, know, well, well and, and anyway, she just said it has to be thirty days. Thirty days. Okay. So. Yeah. So it's got to be this week. Oh, I'm sure it'll be. It's got to be like, by Friday. It'll be. Yeah. yeah that'll yeah. happen. Yeah. I, what 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 I gave, what we gave Sarah to put in last month was was really yeah. little yeah. stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that will definitely happen by Friday. So Sarah, do you give them the the official um, warning? I'm happy to prepare a warning notice if that would be helpful to the town. Mm -hmm. You that guys would, have to get it to the paper. That would help Julie. Yeah. You guys have to get it to the paper though. She doesn't do that because she doesn't want to pay the bill. Which yeah. that could be. Well, we don't have it in the budget. No, no, yeah. I'm just, I'm just. You could, yeah. you could send it and say send the send the bills to Rochester. That's what I, I mean. But okay, yeah. uh, but that's okay. If you like the idea, I can do that. Uh, no, 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 no I think Julie. I think it makes yeah. more sense. No, yeah. so what? It, um, so I think I think what we do is you make the changes, you send it to Dan, and then Dan forwards it to to um, to Doom. By Friday, and then you mm -hmm. can have the meeting on the twenty seventh. Mm -hmm. Which is the thirty days, and yeah. Sarah's going to prepare the the actual the actual words yeah. wording, which yeah. she'll give to Julie. Yeah, and after, and that does not have to be done by Friday. Right, right, because we have a leeway. Right, it, that, that doesn't need thirty yeah, days. Yeah. Friday, <laughs> so okay, for you, Sarah, to make those changes. changes? Oh, that sorry. the planning board has given the proposal to the select board. Is there anything just like? I mean, a uh, dated email <coughs> sending it to Julie to distribute to the select board? Would that do the job? Um, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Say that again? Sorry. To document that the, the recommendations were submitted from the planning board to the select board um, 30 days before our hearing. So it would be if it just um, a formal email dating okay. saying that here is our planning board, here's the, um, send it to Julie to distribute to the, um, okay. the, the select board. board. To that way it's in the records that, right. that, that correct. With a, C that with a CC to do. <laughs> <laughs> and then she takes care of all the postings, including uh, in the papers. Yeah, um, well, the, so, so the, the, the wording of the, of the, the wor wording of the warning is tricky. So Sarah's going to draft that. 
and and she and Julie will figure out who's doing what. I did I did actually end up putting them up around town because I I understood that Julie was going to do that and then realized that it hadn't uh -huh. happened. So I ran around and did that and I got Thank about you. 15 days. So that was. Um, Thank you. But. Um, so it's important that Julie understands that those that they have to that the the three postings need to be fi fifteen days out. Mm -hmm. It's not like the regular a regular select board. Yeah. Um, but that's that's everything, right? It could be post. I mean, as soon as we get it, we know that we're going to have it. can go out. It doesn't have to be fifteen. Twenty days. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah. Do you yeah. think you're going to take action? on the 27th after you close the hearing, or will you need to push that out to another? Meeting? It depends on who shows depends up and complains. We have some interesting mm -hmm. and, and compelling questions right. at the hearing. Okay. Uh, it depends on who knows about it. Yeah, right. That's why we want to do it in November. <clears throat> I missed last week's Herald. Did the article get in? Yes, I have it, and I, and I copied it. I, I cut it up. You frame it. And put it <laughs> no, but I saved it with the date line. Oh, okay. Most important. Yes. Yes. Yes, and that, but ideally, all that documentation needs to be kept by um, the town staff in the folder marked adoption process, so that if you ever have questions, you can go back and. So I have some documentation too from our original submittals that I need to send over to. Mm, okay. Okay. Have that. Okay. And then following adoption, assuming that the select board wants to adopt this document, the state has instituted a new requirement for a report that has to be prepared post-adoption. <laughs> We're still figuring out exactly what the state wants, but Two Rivers is happy to write that report for your review after we get through that hurdle <laughs> later on down the road. Okay. Does that have to be done by the end of the year also? Um, no. Okay. Oh. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds Nine like a plan, right. team. Uh, okay. Good night. Good, night. Good, night. Good work. Thank you, ladies. Does that mean we can adjourn? And does it mean we can cancel tomorrow? Just before, before we go. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 no. We I can't. I just want to clarify. So I have your edits. Thank you so much. That's super helpful, all of this. And thank you for your careful eye on everything. Um, I just want to clarify. Contractor yards, um, you, you would like them to be permitted in the commercial agricultural district, but conditional in the agricultural residential district. Does that sound correct to you? Say that again, yes. sir. Yeah. Permitted in the commercial agricultural commercial. district, but conditional in the agricultural residential district. I think that's right. Per, if we permitted, Con means there's no, no conditions. No conditions. Put on them. Right. In, Which, in, in commercial. Yeah, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Oh, I thought that's, but well, that's what you said you wanted. So... Well, I was so wrong. You, <laughs> well, no, well, no what, what you what what you came in saying was it's not permitted in anywhere. anywhere, right? That was that was that was your concern. Yeah. And so our our compromise was to say, okay, then let's say it's okay in commercial. That was, that was that. Why well, wanted to be conditional everywhere? We didn't want to do that. that no, we didn't have it conditional anywhere. Oh. So no, we no, well, well, somewhere. I mean, in the village is no. It, it's if it's conditional everywhere. It, what, was it prohibited? No, prohibited? Oh, it was prohibited. Sorry, no, no. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just Jesus. gonna read where we're at right now so that we can all get on the same page. So, it is. These are contractor yards. Um, yes, contractor yards are prohibited in the business residential district. They are currently conditional in the. Um, commercial agricultural district. They are currently conditional in the agricultural residential district as well. Yes. It makes sense and to have them. They that way. are prohibited in the conservation residential district. So you've got two conditional uses. Two conditional uses, correct. You had you had looked at the grid, I think. I think the grid might be inaccurate. Ah, I'm so sorry. Okay, I that well that, that that's I was like this is not. That's actually. where that came from then. Okay. Yeah. Because he looked at the grid and he got concerned that we weren't allowing them anywhere. I think that's well, how the this grid happened. actually says that they are. They are permitted 
in commercial agricultural and conditional in ag res, which is not actually true. Currently, as the language stands, it is conditional in both the commercial agricultural and ag residential districts. They are prohibited in business residential and conservation residential districts. So is that grid going to be corrected? Yes, oh, okay. But to whatever you want it to be. So that's right. why I'm trying to clarify yes, right. but, what, but what do we want? Again, this was your so, issue. And, so, you call uh, it. so we have the conditional and uh, ag. commercial ag and um, commercial residential and ag residential. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and prohibited elsewhere. Village. And, and village and, and on res. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. I like that. I think a contractor yard is something that we want potentially needs screening or we, noise we, and we things. We want to have so some control. Some conditions, yeah. 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 Okay. Right. So, so we're going to leave it as is yeah. then. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, and, and, oh, um, there was that big question about um, uh, child care and group homes and what it meant for something to be permitted. And permitted means that it needs a permit. And, and I had a conversation with Sarah, and she said that we had been consistent in that. So even though it reads a funny, and, and by the way, the reason that we, had, that we have that funny language is because it tracks state statute. Uh, okay. So yeah, so you yeah. can thank, you can so thank legislative drafters for that. Yeah. Right. So, we, we, um, and I'm going to add those references to state statute. Yeah, OK, yeah, 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 yeah. So that was our, that was our, that was our compromise yep. there. Um, Oh, the other one we had yep. was um, heavy industry. Yes, yes. We had the, prohibited everywhere. Oh, yeah, delete from prohibited, I said, in, in commercial ag. I right. put that on the list, didn't I? That's my note here, yes, that you would like okay. to be, I assume, conditional yes. in commercial yeah. agriculture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the only note that came up for me this evening um, was the question about intermittent streams, about riparian buffers applying oh. to intermittent streams. Right. Um, as you pointed out, Sandy or, or Dan, that you know, right now the language just says uh, USGS mapped. Um, streams, so we're not distinguishing. I think that a fair point was raised that, you know, during flood situations, those streams, those intermittent streams become quite dangerous. And they're real streams in the spring. I mean, they're not True. little dots. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And we still have a current one still this year because of all of which is usually right. dry. Right. That's right. so just, I don't know where you go from there, but. So, so we, would we say then both permanent and intermittent? Well, well, it just it just streams. says it just says it just says streams, geological maps, streams showing on a geological map. So, you know, I would you know we can argue it both ways, but but they but they both show on the map. Right. Yeah. I think I think our language is fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Was there anything else that was raised this evening that you feel you have to take action on? I didn't think no, so. I didn't think uh, there, there were there were questions of what we meant. Um, I didn't notice but, um, No, I didn't. I didn't hear anything that needed change. No. <clears throat> Nancy Woolley's about um, the apartment in a house. That was just a clarification, right? That, that was that, that was, was about that was about well. So I didn't it, at the housing thing I was at the other night. There were people who actually do apartments, and and yes, we have building codes in Vermont. They are not enforced unless you're going to rent, and then you damn well better follow building codes. Oh, okay. So that's. And, and you do get, you know, the, you, are, you are what's called a public building. Public building doesn't mean it's owned by the public. Public means it's open to the public. Right. Or, you know, so who know. comes and does that type of inspection? Well, the fire marshal is one, and, and um, 
the labor and industry or whoever they are. So there's real they're, people. There, there are actual them. people. Yeah, okay. yeah. They're not. They're 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 stretched pretty thin. But, yes. Okay. But in the event of a in, in the event of a complaint, they show up. Right. And you do have language in the bylaw that specifically calls that out to people's attention to say that you know a state building permit is required for public buildings, which includes short-term rentals, any space that's being rented to the public. Um, right and that you need to coordinate with the State Department of Public Safety, Division of Fire Safety, specifically. Okay. Yeah, I don't think they had any change requests. No. Why do, no, I think we're why good. do the selects have to wait 30 days? Um, you know, I was just looking up the, uh, the adoption rules. It is a long time. Um, and I'm not actually seeing that in the adoption checklist. That's what I was instructed verbally by Kevin today. He oh, was like, remember, well, you have a 40, a 30 day dead zone between submission uh, uh, okay. and Okay, like, well, you know, it's hearing. it's fine because they can't they can't warn it any sooner anyway. So right, it's right. it's not okay. it's not an issue. It's just interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so if they adopt that soon after that, that will fit into the end of your year, year plans? Okay. Be great for us. Yeah. All right. I mean, they really, they really need to do it by the end of December. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Yeah. I don't want us, I don't want us to be having our hearing on Christmas. You know, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that won't be happening. Everybody yeah. checks out after December 10th. Well, not, okay. not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's, there, well, there's that, but there's also, you know, it is possible that someone will come to a hearing with something that they want, that they want to change. Right. I mean, we can't rule that out. Right. Yeah, but it's simple to do that. Should be. Mm -hmm. I think they have to send it back to us and we have to, Ugh. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Red not, not, so, yeah. not so simple. Yeah, all right, anyway. I send it back to you. If there are substantial changes, <sighs> if there are substantial changes beyond, like, typos, right, if it changes the meaning of the bylaw, then they don't have to send it back to planning commission to actually work on it. It's just that the select board has to have another hearing with Ugh. all the requisite right. warning yes. time. Um, and they have to notify planning commission, so they'll send you a copy, but you don't have to actually like make any decisions. Right. At that point, after you submit it to select board, it's their it's business. There, it Kevin becomes likes theirs. To say yeah. they have complete ownership. It's theirs. Okay. 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 Is there any kind of um, appeal period or rights for anyone to, if the select board says we're going to adopt, they adopt it? Mm -hmm. Is there a? Is that the end of it, or is there? I'm not aware of any appeals process. Yeah. You mean that, but that's why she was saying we need, we have to have a good folder for showing what we yeah. did to yeah. right. that, that we that it was properly Paper adopted. Trail, right. right, exactly. So some of the community has no if they don't like something in it, they have no recourse. So sad because there were several opportunities. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean even if they avail themselves to that opportunity, say they go to the select board and say, right. I don't want fifty foot buffer on streams, right, and and that's what they get anyway, but right. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. They can they can not elect us next time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's up in March. <laughs> I was curious. Anyway. Have you found a replacement? <laughs> you know what? Why can't we do have that as a requirement? If you want to get off the board, you have to find your own replacement. I like okay. that requirement. Why yeah. not? I remember John Allen did. <laughs> Much to Greg's chagrin, but mm. anyway, right. we're keeping Sarah right. longer than and, and, yep. and Orca. Um, all right, so, well, we want to make sure Sarah's happy. Do you have what you need? I'm just realizing that <laughs> you made some decisions tonight, but you don't have quorum. <laughs> no, um, we had, the only decision we made was to, go, was to keep what you have, that we made one decision, which was, which was to override that one thing on the, on the, um, um, the only decision we made. You, you decided that you, in fact, did not want to add contract reviews yes. to be permitted. Yes. So that was a decision you made today. Yes. You also said that, contrary to your original instruction of deleting heavy industry from prohibited, you wanted it to be. No, sorry, that's correct. That that confirmed. That's the yeah. same thing. So the only change the you did was making it conditional. The only the only change was to stay with which is the existing language. Yes. Yeah. Stay, stay with, stay with okay. the existing okay. language. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. We changed the no change. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. okay. All right. Now so, are we? Right. Uh, okay. So so Sarah, are you you I'm don't need good. to okay. Good. Um, good. Thank you. We don't really need to meet tomorrow. We do not. Okay. What do you so, do with a warned meeting uh, that you don't was it a warning for uh, Well, yeah, I had to. I had to put up a warning. Um, 
um, I just put up a note that says can't meet and cancel. Okay. Right? Yeah. I don't see. They had their opportunity to tie. Uh, uh, and, and actually, there's one down there I can write canceled yeah. right on it. Okay. Um, right. I took that. Oh, no, for tomorrow. Yeah, this yeah, is today. yeah. yeah. Well, I'll I'm make, like, yeah I, I might be able to write it on all of them, but anyway. I will make um, the motion to adjourn then. Okay. Yeah. All okay. in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, oh, we, oh, we don't have a quorum, so we can't adjourn. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe we did. Maybe none of this.